Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. I am so excited for today. We've got Jordan and McKay back. We're talking today about love, marriage, and sex aroni. That's the title of this one. I, I like that title. So we've brought them in. They're gonna talk to us about their journey, about getting married as Mormons, and regrets, and good things, and all that kind of stuff, about that whole idea of love and marriage, and kind of the role of women, and how this kind of goes down. We get into a little bit about sex, too. The sex stuff. And it gets really interesting and it gets hilarious. So you don't want to miss today's episode. It is so funny. Jordan and McKay have quickly become my favorites to interview and just team up with and collab with. So make sure you do whatever it takes. Go buy their merch, go subscribe to their channel, do whatever it takes to help them grow because they have a really great message and the way they deliver it is really good. And they know their onions and you know, that's why I have them on here. So I'm excited. But look, before we get started, let's dance. Yeah, baby. Jojo, my Patreon. Oh, it was a close one. Gus is gonna dance this time. Yeah, baby. That's, doesn't like dancing, I guess. Who's this one? Carrie Laskowski. Oh, let's go. Before we get started, guys, I just got to give a shout out to posterburner.com. Brad reached out to me from posterburner.com. He's like, Josh, I love your stuff. I think that's what he said, something like that. He's like, I'd like to offer you a free canvas if you want to mention it on your channel. I said, of course. I love supporting businesses because they're cool. And then he sent me the thing I asked for, and I'm like, holy shit, this is really nice. Check this out. Look at this canvas. So... I sent him, it's not even a huge file, but this turned out incredible. So this is season two of the Dad Challenge podcast with Jeff and I, I think Tom's on there a couple times, but every season we do a new poster. We've got a new one coming out soon, but this is amazing. And I'm not even sure how expensive this is, but I think that they are really, really, really affordable. And it's solid, like it's a wood frame, it's built, it's got canvas. I mean, I should have asked for a family photo. Maybe next time I'll ask for a family photo, but. And that's who I am. So, or like Thundercats. But I want to shout out to posterburner.com. Um, so, you go to head to posterburner.com. You can make your own custom posters. You can do canvas. Um, great low prices, fast shipping, amazing quality, like incredible quality. Okay. You can customize it. There's so many people that are happy. They have five star ratings galore. They do phone cases, decals, canvases, posters. And they have a May sale going on right now. Buy one, get one, 90% off any size canvas print. Mother's Day's coming up. I would order it right now if you want to do something for Mother's Day. Like, wouldn't it be amazing? I know on Mother's Day, you get your mom a mixer or a vacuum, which is stupid. Don't ever do that. But if you imagine you did something custom for your mother with a canvas or your, or your or for your dad, something that he loves for her, for Father's Day, such a great gift. Amazing gift. Or get, you know, if you're single and you're good looking and you're just, you love yourself, get a big giant picture of your own damn face and put it on your wall. Do it. Or find some artwork that's not copyrighted and get it. I'm just saying, it's really high quality and I really want to, I really appreciate people when they support this channel. Poster Burner sent me some free stuff. Love getting free stuff. Posterburner.com. Head over there today and get your stuff today. So, boom. Very excited about that. Thank you, Poster Burner. Without further ado, let's get to this interview because it's so good. All right, let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dad Challenge Podcast and your favorite ex-Mormons. You guys are definitely in the outer darkness. How is it how is it how is it out there in the outer darkness? Uh, we're vibing. Kind of, it kind of feels like Utah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say this. Okay, so I'm on their TikTok watching their latest video. They put up these two amazing photos of these people that they drew, hand drawn, just incredible artists. Incredible. Just amazing. Um, and they were just talking about the difference between men and women and the different roles they played. It was great because it's kind of 
be part of what we talk about today a little bit. But I, I, I was going through the videos too, and then I was just, I love the comments. When you guys do like reacting to comment videos, my favorite, because those are my favorite to do too. You love the hate because it just allows you, you know what? Embrace it and do more because if someone has something to say, do full episodes of, at, because you could do it with, you know what people said about you the most? Is that you guys are really graceful. You're understanding, you're not super aggressive. And they like that about you, you guys are gentle, but you're also like right to the point. And I love yeah. that too. Oh yeah. Anyway, long story short, <laughs> Somebody who's pro Mormon left a comment that says, you know, something about enjoy the outer darkness or something. I don't know what they said. And then you guys were like, what? The comment was like, outer darkness, here we come. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, and then I made the shirt, and you guys yes. can see it right here. here it's oh, yeah. go buy it's their fabulous. shirt. It's on their Teespring. The link is below, guys. Help support them. Get over to their YouTube channel and start subscribing and watching their videos. These guys are excellent at what they do and i'm love that you guys are back and i think this is gonna be like we're we're best friends forever now so that's, yes. oh, you yeah. guys are stuck this with me like you're stuck Christmas with me Day for sure part two. <laughs> how's the little one how's the little bean how's he doing he's, he's good sleeping? he's doing excellent he has nine month checkup today and uh oh he chose to now. not sleep but yeah other than <laughs> that what else is now I know it's nine. It's nine. Nine months old. He's a good man. Just don't family vlog, okay? Because we gotta no. stay friends. I want to no. know. Thanks. Thanks, the yeah, Lord. Very... Thanks, Joseph Look, Smith. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> okay. So today we're talking about uh, love, marriage, and sexaroni, which is super exciting because this is one of the main topics that often comes up in any religion. Right, and I think that, uh, especially in my, in specifically my religion, which you guys don't know, so it's going to be a really cool eye-opening experience. You guys ask me anything you want about the evangelical church too, and I'll tell you because it's okay. it's quite similar. But we're, I think, our purity culture is very similar, where we talk about sex is just like, don't do it. The women and men are separated in youth groups very young, and the men talk about their issues, and the girls talk about even up to Bible college, which I went to. They would have these rooms full of just dudes talking about all the problems about sex. And I remember a professor, I swear to God, I asked this, I said, if you have a sex dream and a wet dream, which is like awesome, I wish I could just induce those, they're great. <laughs> I asked if you could do those, is that a sin? And he said it was. Yeah. Wow. You cannot control your dreams. In the Mormon culture, if you were to ask a guy, what would they say about that? They would say the opposite. They would say the opposite. There's tell. actually like spoken from the mouths of leadership oh, that it's okay yeah. to have wet dreams. Yeah. So. In the same toxic uh, speech um, where he's talking about other things that are just. Because like, it's not something you can control. But, yeah. Did we just find something good about Mormonism? We did. <laughs> oh, yes. There's, there's some confetti raining down right now. Okay, so that's excellent. I, again, every video, I don't always want to just be bashing Mormons and LDS culture, but that oh, yeah. is actually really interesting to me. That, yeah. I mean, in the, I mean, we're getting really close to technology that's going to allow you to control your dreams. Did you know that? You're going to be able to be like, plug it in, put whatever, you know, Download bucket the list dream <laughs> sequence. Download the dream. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, at that point, it won't be. At that point, you can help it, so then it'll be a sin. So I don't think oh, they would go for that. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so, all right. So walk me through a little bit about your story, how you guys met, the marriage thing, and how it all kind of comes together as a as an LDS person. Like, were you? Did you have issues, worries, or was it awesome? Tell me your experience from your experience. Do you want to? I can. I can start with the first half. So we actually went to the same high school. Um, which is kind of interesting, but we, we grew up outside of Utah, so it was a little different. Um, and we had some mutual friends and we never really like dated. We didn't really date or have that much contact before. We hung out one time. Uh, yeah. We hung out one time for a friend's birthday and we hung out one time and it was not anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> fast forward, I, I was on my mission. <laughs> A, uh, a mutual friend of ours, I, I don't want to tell too much of that, her story, but she was interested in me and was really Ooh. excited about my return and talking to Jordan about it Awkward. a lot. So Jordan was getting a lot of secondhand information. I had no, in lovely person, had no intentions of uh, dating or pursuing a relationship with her. So... Um, I did not message him with the intent of like getting together. Let me just make that clear. <laughs> like I didn't break girl code. This is already awesome. <laughs> I'm like, no, I did not do that. So I just messaged him and said, hey, welcome back from your mission. Glad to see your home. That was it. That was all I said. It was a Twitter DM. That was all I said. <laughs> Let me stop you for a second. Uh, that's what a guilty person sounds like to me. I'm not going to lie. 
<laughs> Jordan, Got you straight up, you straight up broke girl code, and that's that's fine. It's good because look what you guys is. are now. It, it was ordained. Right. It was ordained. Yeah. So, so it was on, necessary. And then so after her message, I kind of did the the proverbial like, here's my number, slide it across the table kind of yeah. situation. So and then it just kind of blossomed from there. So. Um, a while while we were dating, I was uh, going to school at BYU Idaho, and she lit, was going to school at the University of Utah down here in Utah. So I every weekend would come down and chill for the weekend with her, basically probably from April until October when I moved here. Okay, okay, um, okay. Well, what is okay? I went to Bible college. I know this experience. What does Mormon chilling consist of? Um, Mormon. Ch- what do you want to explain as Mormon? Ch- I, I before we get to that, um, there was an issue that we did run into because I didn't really have anyone that. Well, I did have a couple people that lived close by, but she was just like, "Yo, stay at my house, whatever. It's cool." And she would. I still lived with my mom at the sleep time. Sleep yeah, in a different yeah, room. Yeah. Um, that. Uh, that normally some feathers. Yeah, will ruffle some feathers because it opens the door to sin or something like that. So That's not living above reproach. The optics aren't good. I get that. I, if yeah. I'm coming from a church, my church would have had the same issue. Like, we would yeah. judge somebody who would have slept over. And, yeah, it would have been. Yeah. I get yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, I get it. So that that is on the same ground. So for us, I mean, Mormon, Netflix, and chill. Just not like... I mean, it depends on your definition of Netflix and chill. Like that, you know, Mormon Netflix and chill is like making out for like eight hours. That's Mormon Netflix and chill because (laughs) that's all you can do. (laughs) So (laughs) I got and so I, I'm very, I'm like blushing because I, like, I don't talk about this stuff very much. And so, but that's exactly it. Like when I was a Christian growing up, yeah, you just make out, but like, like, as I, I, when you get married though, like I did when I waited, you know, that stuff, it just, you don't do it anymore. You're like making it, it's like, eh. it's like, but going up to that, that you just get to the point where you're like, oh, that's fun. And then guys obviously like, you know, boner for 12 hours. That's, that's unhealthy. There's a lot of yeah. blood going <laughs> and like, you're dizzy. <laughs> but like, I, I get it. And you get the hand, holding hands of the blankets when you're not really dating you're supposed to be. Like, there's all these like secret dating tips that you did when you were in youth group. But that sounds, I mean, Netflix, more Netflix and chill is just making out. But obviously, you guys are told to wait. So that's that's yeah. good. That makes yeah. sense. Yep. All right. So you, you're headed down to U of U. That's where I went. Yeah. Yeah. That's where she was gone. So I dragged him to Utah. Essentially, our I started talking to her the week I got home from my mission in March. We officially started dating in April, engaged in September, planned to get married in March, a year after I got home from my mission, and ended up getting married at the very beginning of January. So we're essentially looking at a 10 month span from just talking to marriage. To just talking. Mm -hmm. And is that a standard thing in Mormon culture? Absolutely. By a lot of people's standards, we got married very, like, slowly. Slowly. <laughs> By a lot of people's standards. Of all the people that you've known, who's who's the fast? Don't have to say names, obviously, but who's who was, like, Ooh. the quickest? I don't even know. I can't I, think of anybody off the top of my head who I There was somebody from my YSA ward remember. who was two months. Knew the guy and then yep. married him after two months. Yep. What Jeez. is the divorce rate amongst Mormons like? I don't know, but I'm sure it's awful. Yeah, that uh, would. Uh, women, but uh, but if I'm correct, women aren't. You're like dissuaded at all costs to divorce, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, but it's probably likely a lot of loveless marriages, at at minimum. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for and sure. then there's also a, a big culture surrounding having kids immediately. Um, we have barely one child, and uh, before our <laughs> our child barely one. <laughs> I, I mean, he's young, barely, barely one. He's a whole child, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> but um, I mean, there we have people who were getting married around the same time as us who ha- had their second child like before we got pregnant. So yeah. So what is the is the idea of having a lot of kids in the marriage of a, of a LDS couple is because is it a lineage thing? Is it like more people come to your planet? What's the what's the draw? Um, there is rhetoric that surrounds that in the, and we won't get 
too much into it because it bleeds into like the plan of salvation and everything which is just mm -hmm. a whole other thing but the idea is that um every person who has lived or will ever live is a spirit offspring of god mm -hmm. and that in order for those spirits to receive a body they have to be created here on earth so it's kind of that idea of well if we create more bodies on earth into the right church already you know we're kind of already in the same um well there's like this pressure on women and couples and they say you know these these spirits are waiting and they want to have their mm -hmm. opportunity and you owe it to them to give them that oh so okay uh -huh. now i'm getting it now i'm hearing it so their spirits are waiting who are these already cognizant spirits who are like mm -hmm. hurry up and have some babies so i can mm -hmm. embody that spirit and yeah. so that's so weird to me because then the baby comes it's like it feels weird to me because you the spirit that enters in your child could is not really a spirit that's created by you two. It's created that was just waiting in line. That's weird. It right? is a that little bizarre. That feels yeah. weird. What if you get a weird with a one with a weird mustache or something? I don't know. <laughs> what was the so, the one quote from the one have them young and have them fast? Oh yeah. I can't have them young, have them fast, and don't. This was a quote from a prophet. We talked about it in our last YouTube video. And don't like not have more kids for personal reasons because selfish that's for reasons. personal or selfish reasons. What yeah. does that mean? Like basically, even if you don't want more kids, you're gonna have more kids. Or so I don't selfish, feel like we're it's selfish to not have kids. Yeah. yeah, like oh, I don't feel like we're financially stable enough. That would be a selfish reason. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Maybe you could just dip into the hundred billion dollars that uh, they could just give some people some cash. Right. <laughs> One of the questions I did get, and I remembered it now, is that how do women who deal with infertility issues struggle in the Mormon church? And is it like untalked about? And I had one that said, no, 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 I, I was infertile. And she, this one was, if you go in my comment section on my YouTube, this one was, this one blasted me. No, no. She personally emailed me to say she was unsubscribing and then say I was completely wrong, even though oh. she didn't go to the Mormon church, but she still loved it. And she said, I was infertile and I was treated lovely. So, I mean, you're always going to get the people that are pro-Mormon to say, no, it's it's all yay. And I'm sure, I'm sure some people have had great experiences. Yeah. But sure. overall, in your experience, a woman, if, if your culture insists on women having multiple babies because their spirits waiting and that even saying something like we can't afford it is not a good enough excuse that to me is a culture of like if you cannot have children you are literally an outcast for as like long as sub you are basically. and there's many people in my circle who i know firsthand who struggle with infertility who had the perception that because they weren't able to have children that there either was something wrong with them or that god was punishing them living in sin or some kind of thing for like some that. reason right and so that's kind of which is totally asinine and terrible and so that is kind of the culture that yeah. permeates the church as far as infertility and plus a lot of mormons don't have boundaries so when it comes to i mean people culture will just wise. flat up ask okay. you like hey why have you guys have kids yet and it's like that's a really inappropriate question to ask yeah. someone please don't do that <laughs> but the culture the culture allows it because that's just the culture right so you oh, yeah. you you're born and raised in a culture that's just normal oh yeah like yeah. we had our son our son's nine months old within a month or two people from the church were messaging me and asking me when we were going to have our second yeah. You're like, can I just let the flaps heal for just five Seriously? minutes? Seriously! <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> My C-section scar isn't even healed yet, y'all. Come on! Like, just, I got <laughs> some crazy glue in there. But Seriously. we talk a lot. There's a couple of, like, the family vloggers that have all these kids in, right? The, the Mormon family vloggers, which, again, we have to tie this in some, and this is our family vlogger moment, I guess. But you look at uh, Not Enough Nelsons, you get into, I think, Crazy Middles, Crazy Eights. All these family vloggers that are Mormon, they just, they have kids or they adopt massive amounts of kids jordan page with fun cheap and free or whatever her name is they have 10 i think they have eight kids and oh they're trying God. to have 10 and she doesn't even like sex she's a whole i i need you guys to go watch one of her videos where okay, she talks about we watched the one you know where they were talking about their religion but we watched the one where she did like the q a about okay the Book of Mormon I and everything. Is it we good? were like it was like a total missionary opportunity yeah. like holy crap i felt like i was sitting in a seminar yeah okay, missionary we are going to snark husband. Us together, you guys are gonna come into my snark world. I'm not sure you're good at snark, but that's okay. I'll do a lot of the snarking, but allow you guys to like tap yes. in. We're yes. gonna snark on one of her videos together. Okay, yes, hell yeah. quick question. You went to BYU, not in Utah. Yeah, in Idaho. Um, okay, so yeah. the colloquial nickname for BYU Idaho, because it is easier, less competitive to get to, into than the BYU Provo, the proper one, mm -hmm. um, it's called lovingly byu i do because everybody if you go there for four years you don't get married like essentially 
what's wrong with you? <laughs> you're this never again. Yeah, there's yeah. something wrong. Ring They're before like, spring and your money back. Yep. Um, exactly. That's, and that's Bible, that's Bible college as well, where I okay. was, our, our uh, men, guys weren't allowed in the girls' dorms every other week for like half an hour with the doors open was like our visitation, like check out our room, this shitty room. Wow. Yeah, been, like, kind of the same idea. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So I know that culture, and then they'd go into the woods and have sex, and everybody knew it. Everybody, yeah. everybody knew it, and they would convince women. They would, the guys would convince the girls to have bum stuff because that's not losing your virginity. I'm not kidding. Right, that doesn't count. Uh, man. It doesn't count. So I asked because eight eight passengers, uh, the guy, the milk cake, the milk cake family. Did you oh watch the milk cake? Oh my We cringed oh my so gosh. hard. Who the frick does that? I thought I was gonna throw up. <laughs> It's so okay. gross. First of all, there's way too much fun on in that cake. But yes. her dad, that, that, the father of that family, is a professor at BYU. Okay, that, okay. Yeah. I did hear that. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So that's that's a thing. He must, and they he likely makes a good chunk of money too. Then working there, right? Those that's I'm, a very elite level school, right? Yeah. In Provo, yeah. Yeah, it yeah. Is, it, it's a private school, so. I mean, professors. Okay. I feel like most professors make decent money, right? Yeah. So okay. Lead up to the point where you got married. So you asked her to marry you. Is do you have to ask her dad? Is there a bunch of like rules in place for all that kind of stuff? How's the normal courting process go for Mormons? So that usually would be part of it. Um, it was an interesting thing with Jordan because her dad wasn't really in the picture when she was younger. Mm -hmm. So I was more in tune with talking to her about this stuff, and she was like, "No, mm -hmm. I don't really care for that." Mm -hmm. um, in my family, and I don't want to share too much, obviously, but um, it's really kind of traditional to have my parents there for the um, for the proposal or whatever, mm -hmm. um, just to kind of illustrate how whoa, casual... Whoa, whoa. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> Your parents have to be there for the proposal? Okay, thank you. Thank you yeah. for that reaction, first of all. <laughs> I mean, there's no, there's no romance or anything there. There's nothing cool. Your no, parents are there. It's, it's it's very really awkward strange. in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. What if you, it wasn't what if she said me. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't me, man. That. <laughs> so. So that didn't I, go over too well. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and we kind of, without getting too into details, so we can keep it brief. Um. We yeah. had a rocky relationship with her and I and my parents. Um, okay. So basically, the day of, I didn't even have the ring yet. It was still in transit. Um. I drove down from Idaho. I left from my job. I brought a zip tie from my job at the tire shop. Um, I called my mom 10 minutes before we left to go get Chipotle. After and it had like, happened. This is so epic. Hey, um, yeah, I'm <laughs> gonna propose to her, FYI. So, and then, uh, yeah, I went out, I had my guitar, I played a couple songs for her, and then I just asked nice. her, so. It was really play, see that casual. that's kind of romantic. I'm not gonna. That's kind of romantic. Yeah. You have a guitar, yeah. play your wife some songs, but your mom's just hanging out in the background. I don't get it. Yeah, I would not. Yeah. So luckily, they. I mean, they were in a different state, so they didn't was, even know. Oh, so they so were okay. They weren't no, there. No, they weren't there. Oh my no. god. Was, I geez. I chose to uh, to x that. So yeah. what what guitar do you have? That one I actually borrowed because I didn't have one with me. It was uh, a Fender. I can't even remember what kind of model. It was a, an acoustic guitar, but yeah. What do you have now? I play uh, LTDs because nice. metal guitar. Taylor, SG, oh yeah, uh, I got the Fender, SG. Strat, and a uh, um, something else. Something else. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got I a, an LTD seven string and an LTV. You have a seven string. Yeah. You play metal. You play metal. Oh yeah. Dude, this is my dude. You're this my spirit the, animal. This is the guy, right? <laughs> when I come to the states, I'm gonna bring a band. You should come on tour with us. It'll be fun. Let's do it. <laughs> Jordan, you can be our like tambourine person, okay. or unless you play right. something. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, the it's all dudes only. It's dudes only. Groovy. It's Mormon yeah. band. Dudes only. Groovy. Bras, groovy. bras or two. Yeah. It, the wives come out. They sell the merch. That's what they're there for. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So okay, you you propose. She says yes. Everybody's happy. Love is in the air. Then what are the plans as a standard LDS couple? What's next? So the first thing that we needed to do was book the Salt Lake City Temple which is a very hot topic. Um, mm -hmm. So that's essentially what everything was evolving around, was booking the Salt Lake City Temple and a um, reception hall literally like adjacent to the temple. You look out and there's nothing between you and the temple that's like the... Do you have to get married at a temple? To get sealed, yes. Um, yes you can okay. get s married civilly and then get sealed. 
at the time there was if you got married civilly first there was a one year waiting period before getting sealed in the temple so you couldn't get married in the temple if you had a civil marriage mm-hmm. first makes sense okay so is the temple free from lds card carrying with the with the, you have the card yeah yep that's so, i mean that's that's cool yeah. free outside of your tithing yeah your 10 oh, percent. the 10 percent you, you pay to get in yeah, yeah. that's right that, yeah. well, that's and then whole everybody episode. else that's has to be pay fun. their 10 percent to get in yeah. so everybody's yeah. paying to get in Admission. okay <laughs> okay, so that's the admission is to be a card carrying paying member of the church. Okay, yep. yes. so you book the thing, you bu- and then the hall is that an LDS hall as well? Yeah, so it was actually in the Joseph Smith Memorial Building, mm. right next door to the temple. So sounds nice. Was, I sounds, sounds like <laughs> sounds like it is. It is a correct. Great I have not place, seen it. But are the inside walls are they like a light beige color? <laughs> I'm trying to think. More back. like an eggshell white, I yeah, think. Yeah. It's an eggshell white because everything's yeah. white. My bad. Yeah. Uh, probably a very, like, just not, like, it's just square building. It's not very. Does, is, it's it a has, nice like, some building, building. No, it's actually really. But it's, and it's I'm just. I'm Googling it. Look yeah. it up. It's a really Google nice the, building. The, um, the front. I don't even What's know it what called? to call it. Joseph, Joseph Smith Memorial Building. Yeah. I think you might be pleasantly I, surprised. <laughs> Can I point this out uh, to you guys? And people are like, we don't honor, we don't think Joseph Smith's a god. He's got his own memorial building. Holy shit, look at that building. Yeah. <gasps> he also has. That's gorgeous. <laughs> right. He also has a hymn in the hymnal called Praise, Praise to, to the, the Man. Man. You have got to be, that's that's not idolatry, my ass. That's <laughs> I know. straight up idolatry. I know. You're telling me. Oh, I used to sing all the time. And it's set to a, an Irish hymn, so it, or not an Irish, a Scottish, Scottish hymn, so. Um, super catchy. Holy. It's super like, catchy. I'm not going to lie, okay? Like, that's... Th- here's another thing that Mormons get right. That temple is fire. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, that temple is gorgeous. Like, regardless and of Moroni, our views is on Is that the... Moroni in the top? Yep. Moroni yep. with the horn? Okay. Yep, Moroni. Idolatry. There's yep. literally a golden statue on top of your temple of... <laughs> yeah. Not God. Of yep. Moroni. Of yeah. an angel. Yeah. yeah. Idolatry. Yeah, Jazz literally. Hands. Okay. Yep. Oh, oh, oh. All right. So, oh, you get... Little trumpet. So walk me through. So you guys are planning it. You get it. You, 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 your day's coming. Everybody's allowed in. Are there people who are not allowed in, I think, right? Because they don't have the, the mm-hmm. what's it called? Yeah. The temple recommend. Tekka recommend. Yeah. Yes. My own so, father was not allowed to participate in our, yep. in our scene. And what did he, and what did he think of that? He was very, very mad at me. <laughs> oh, he was. Okay. Because <laughs> yeah. you're, he, did he feel like you were, he, did it feel like to him, and this is probably likely, is that you're in this religion that ties you up to not be able to do anything, and he feels like, I'm, like, to me, that's, if you're going to be a religion that's all about grace and understanding and love, let people come to your wedding, at Seriously. minimum. Yeah. Let them oh, come yeah. into the temple and be like, check it out, it might even like it, come stay. Yeah. It's like yeah. marketing, marketing yeah. 101, but yeah. no, okay. No, yeah, he was very, he was very frustrated because he told me I denied him the opportunity to walk me down the aisle, so. That hurts. Yeah. Oof. You guys, you know what? On your ten year, brand new wedding, I'll be there. I'll be That's playing. We'll thought. do the metal. We'll bring the metal band. Hell we'll yeah. uh, re wedding it, and everybody's allowed to join. Come, yes. doesn't matter who you are, and like all you can eat Chinese food, like <laughs> mosh pit on the dance floor. Yes, mosh pit. Okay, it's it's set. We're doing it. We're here right, for good. it. Okay, so you you get the, you go to the temple. Walk me through this. Is it creepy? Is it cool? Do you have to wear yes. the thing? The hat. Yes. Yep. Yes. You have to wear the <laughs> ceremonial clothes. And the primary reason why the people have to be a card-carrying member to be able to do it is because we kneel across from each other at the altar and yep. we do the final secret handshake of the temple. We we hold each other's hand that Can way. Can you show me? Yeah. Can you show me the yeah, secret we'll handshake? Show you. Oh my gosh. Right there. People are going to get mad about this one, but um, this one is called the... Uh, are you? Oh, you've got your okay. You've got your pinkies interlocked. Yeah, you pinkies p- interlock unlocked. the pinkies, and then you touch at the uh, Ooh, the that's wrist. Sexy. It's the sure <laughs> sign of the nail. Where, oh, uh, the nail that uh, Jesus. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah, where that's, they put it in his wrist. Oh my gosh, that's weird. Yeah. Yep. That just to so, me is just like unnecessarily like what? What? What does yeah. it mean that you guys are being? Are you being classed together with a nail? It's called. Well, it has two different names it's called well three different names the fourth token of the melchizedek priesthood the patriarchal grip or the patriarchy grip as i patriarchal like patriarchal grip isn't that wow. nice or the sure wow. sign of the nail so it's the patriarch <laughs> yeah <laughs> as a woman jordan yes. like how do women mormon women who who are not robot thinkers do you not think what the f ever yes 
<laughs> well, and oh, that's not even that's not even the worst part. Like when you're doing the sealing ceremony and you're sitting across from each other, you you don't even look at each other. You don't even look at each other. It's super awkward. And you also agree in the temple that you submit to your husband and you okay. commune with your husband who then communes with God. Right. So you that's, shut up. I want to talk about I want to save that for a little bit. Yeah. Remember yeah. we yeah. I want to bring I didn't want to get too far into it. I know, I just, but that's that really important. Pertinent. Because this, again, I just, I, it's important to talk about this because it just, again, shows more and more and more how second place women are in Mormon culture, right? Absolutely. So you guys are there, you're kneeling across, you have to learn these handshakes. Mm -hmm. Is everybody else wearing their Chef Boyardee hats and stuff like no. that behind you? Oh, just no. us. So that's like additionally awkward because yeah. you're and the only one looking like a freaking weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> and in that instance, um, <laughs> normally with stuff in the temple, everybody would have to get dressed up in white. Uh, with that, um, if you have nice your, clothes. they just come in their their normal like wedding attire okay. or temple attire. So the temple attire happens, and then you're sealed. Okay, so are you okay? So you walk. Do you walk down an aisle together? How does this all work? Oh, you don't. Nope. This nope. is so interesting to me. By nope. the way, okay, so walk <laughs> me through the whole thing. Do do us a favor and Google um, temple sealing room, and it will kind of enlighten Ooh. you because it'll, it'll show, show you what the altar. Like. Temple sealing room. It'll show you what the altar looks like. Yeah, and what the room looks like—it's super pretty. So, um, are you supposed to be able to see this? Am I gonna get struck by lightning? No, you are. You are supposed. To, yeah, they will photograph them. Oh, before, I see. It. I see. It. I see. Um, it. The temple is dedicated. Um, it's gorgeous. So it is. They have that it's altar. Beautiful. They have a guy who is an ordained sealer. He has the sealing keys uh, of the mm -hmm. priesthood. So he will sit at a little table, and he'll have two witnesses on either side uh, for. Mm -hmm. The purpose of weddings, usually they'll have someone from the groom's side and someone from the bride's side. Um, priesthood holders who are allowed to do it um, sit and be the witnesses. And they also sign the paperwork as the, the, the witness for the... Yeah. For How the, many the, sealing uh, rooms like this are there in the temple? Many. Ooh, there are many, okay. Usually, yeah, usually there's like four or more. Dep it Going depends on, on the temple. temple. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's like the, the, just a chandelier in that room is worth more than my house. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, they it's, oh, spare no expense crazy. on the temple. And most but they spare expense on the fashion deaf. design. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Why can't they update the fashion, like the uh, the robes? Just give me a break. It's twenty twenty one. Just they, they give me some skinny jeans, a little rip in them. The the hat. They, they took, took away the random the string tail um, <laughs> on the hat, really but that's all they've done. About. Yeah, so. Just like. Dang, man. Just put like a, can you get one with Nike on it or anything? Like Adidas? <laughs> like I'm sponsored. <laughs> are you are you sitting towards the priest or whoever the guy is? Or are you sitting towards so, each other? We sit, sit toward each other and then the uh, the sealer would be kind of off to the side. So we would have to I see turn okay. basically at a 90 to degree look at to look at him. Yeah. But you're not and allowed then, to look at each other. You can. You can. It's just, you're listening to him talking, so it's like looking at each other, but like listening yeah, to him talking, awkward. so it's like awkward. Yeah. yeah. Most people don't end up looking at each other because it's kind of awkward. It's, well, this, is called weird, the so. this is called the look cringe, okay? The cringe look. So it's it's basically, this happens at my church growing up. Any church anybody's ever grown up that has like an organ or just piano, right? And there's there's always this lady here. She's usually Joyce. Joyce is now going to come up and bless us with Joyce. a custom hymn. Oh, and then yeah. Joyce sings a song, but Joyce is absolutely terrible at singing, okay? She just, she feels the Lord has called her to sing this song by Amy Grant or something, and it's <laughs> on a tape, and they put the tape in the wrong side oh, first God. instead of to put it in and oh. rewind it. It's so awkward, and when you're listening to her, you're like, oh my God, and then you have to look at the ground, because, or you're like fl flipping through the, you just, when you read your Bible, you're like, I have to read that scripture I was looking for, because you cannot look, like, because it's the moment you're like, it's cringe, right? So oh that's gosh. that's what we're seeing here. Yeah, that's, that's called the cringe. cringe. I, I, yeah. That's how I feel it too. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Thank you, Joyce, um, for that amazing song. <laughs> for real. Well, and you can't say, you don't say I do. They make nope. it very clear to you before you get married. The little preacher, cedar, sealer dude will come over to you and say, you don't say I do, you say yes. Yeah. What To what question? So it's based, I can't think of the exact uh, wording of it off the top of my head, uh, but it's basically... Uh, do you covenant with God and all these witnesses? Yeah, before God, angels, and the witnesses here okay. today to do X, Y, or Z thing for your wife. If so, then say, say yes, yes. Yeah. and then you. Yes. I mean, you guys get angels at your wedding. That's not not gonna lie. It's pretty badass. I know, right? right? That's, That's pretty badass. who gets to say I had angels at my wedding. I now, know. let's talk. Okay, so you say yes. You guys are allowed to kiss. Yes. Or is it the handshake? Uh, yes, you you can kiss. Did we, we kiss able, while we did the handshake? Oh, I think gosh. we did. I don't remember. Ew. 
<laughs> across the altar. That's weird. This gets worse. <laughs> weird. Yeah, worse. you know what I'm loving? I'm loving the guy when you're looking back. You're like, we did this. We <sighs> absolutely. And I feel like there's a little bit of anger. Like, damn it. Yeah. Why? Frequently, right? yes. <laughs> That yeah. is hilarious. And then okay, so after that, we ahead. stood up and uh, exchanged rings and then kissed again for, yeah. I know then we did for sure, but yeah. Because then it's like, get it on town. Now, when you're done getting married, is there photos with your robes? You have to take them off. You go outside and do photos yeah. somewhere else. Take them off. Okay. You're not supposed to take photos in the, the temple robes at all, ever. Um, ever. So you, you take them off. And then they, they have a, like a traditionally, like, this is the exit door where the married people come out. So they gather everybody up. You're not really supposed to, but it's so tradition. Gather all your family at the door. Gather everybody up at the family, at the door. And then everybody kind of like receives you when you come out and. Out of the door. To, and this yeah. is, are you supposed to undress together in that room? No, no, no. You so go back to on, you like locker room style. Yeah. No, there, there should be a place steamy. where you're like. Let's get naked now. We're allowed. Right? That should be the celebration room. Oh, It'll yeah. smell funny in there. You know it'll smell funny in there. Right? <laughs> yeah, no, if you go it's back like, to your separate little what locker is that? rooms. It's just, it's, it's got that, there's a thing in here that I don't like. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you walk out, you're received. Everybody's happy. You're all Mormon yep. sealed, you which means that now. You pictures with everybody. And yep. then um, after that, we. You only have a certain amount of time to be on temple grounds because the temple, the Salt Temple is busy. And so. Yeah. It, Everybody, like, they have, you have a, like, three-hour slot, I think. Maybe not even that much. Because wow. so, they've got all the other brides coming in at the same time, so they're going to yeah. move them through like cattle. Okay, so uh, are you? if I were to come down to Utah, and I'm going to come visit you guys, can I just go to the temple and hang out? Like, not in the building, maybe, yeah. but can I just go there? You yeah. can, yeah, yeah. Oh. Depend, yeah, right now, that temple is... Under um, construction. a oh. huge overhaul going on right now, but any other temple, you can go to the grounds. There's like 15 in the state of there. Um, it's <laughs> just when you go in the front door, there's a desk, and that's where you have to get the the little card, membership card. So you card cannot scan. pass that front desk without your recommend. Yeah, yeah. it's like Costco. <laughs> <laughs> so if I, if I took your recommend, like let's say you had one, you gave it to me, could yeah. I just be like, here I am, and I walk through? Well, they would have to scan it. My recommend wouldn't right. work anymore. If you, um, but let's say you had a working recommend. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We have a very good friend who. Um, we could actually she... hook you up if that's what you were interested in. Oh, yeah. I am interested. Yes, okay. I am. <laughs> so, and, and like... she just had a friend give her recommend to her, and she went. Yep. Um, no problem. She Why did you before, go though? Why? But... Why? Why did who go? This the friend that we have. Yeah. Oh, she just, it was after she left the church, she wanted to reclaim that, oh, I that see. Uh, experience. The experience for herself. So, But this that's friend cool. primarily does it for people who can't go to their kids' weddings. And so that's right. how it started. That makes sense. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Okay, so then here, uh, so, okay, let's get back to this whole thing about when you're sealed, this is the spiritual thing of everything. So when you are sealed to your husband, Jordan, mm -hmm. that means now that in order for you to communicate with God or whoever, you have to speak through McKay and he speaks Basically. on your behalf? Yeah. Basically. Basically. So, That's the verbiage. And I think it so was So how do they teach women recently. to pray? How do they teach women to pray in the Mormon church? This is like the weird thing that happens is they say that personal revelation is available to everyone, right? And that includes women. But yet men have the priesthood. So the priesthood is the final say, essentially. Yeah. So like I can go to him with things and be like, I feel like this is the revelation that I got. And he can be like, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nope, that's not what God's telling you. No. <laughs> no, you're I'm wrong. pretty sure. Yeah, you're that's wrong. That's of the devil. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could definitely take advantage of that to some weird things or some good things. Be like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. no, I think you definitely should not go to uh, Costco anymore. That's, yeah. nope. <laughs> yep. God has we told are broke. me that we need to not go to Costco anymore. <laughs> yep. God has told me that you need to wear this lingerie from now on. Exactly. That's where we get into like some weird things yeah. that can be done that's, with that. Yeah. And that's next. Okay, so again, so th I get that, and that's that's probably another spiritual discussion, but okay, so you're sealed to him, and have you ever spoken to other women, Jordan, where like, I don't like this. Like, Multiple. Yeah. And I think recent, very recently, they changed the verbiage in the temple because people have of complained. nearly 200 years of people complaining. About, That's usually how long well, it takes a mayor to change. But yeah, it's and I think most churches are way behind that stuff. But again, it just proves our point, your point, my point together that it's so it's so granular that they'll just change anything to make it work for the yeah. because as kids, 
and millennials and people coming up through the church, Gen Xers and everybody else, do you find that those people are, are, are less and less attracted to the Mormon culture and, tem and uh, the religion and that they're just not going away so Mormons have to figure out a way to keep the young people there? Is there a mass exodus happening right now with young people? I, in my opinion, yes. Yeah. And a lot of people will hypothesize that ever since like the internet became like a household like standard, yep. everything's been on the decline. The only yep. thing is that um, a lot of people, they don't understand that when they just leave, um, the church still has their the records. Their records. So there's no numbers that really reflect that other than last year. And you can say that they say it's pandemic, because of COVID. Um, there was only a 1% growth, which is the lowest it's been in decades, maybe ever. Yeah, but understand that 1% growth actually means like 11% decline. Yeah. Because if you're not doing 10%, you're losing mass. And I, I again, you say they say 16 million, but you say they just have records of 16 million, which could mm -hmm. mean that it could yeah. be 5 million. Well, Absolutely. It's probably more than that, but worldwide, there's probably 10 million or less, right? Yeah, I would say. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, that's and that's yeah. another thing. Okay, so you guys are walking out of the room after getting undressed. Now you get to see your wife's boobs at all. That's so unfair. <laughs> so you get out Wait. to the thing. You get your photos done. You head over to the party. And then this is where you guys get to drink and eat and then everybody dances? So there's a... Our wedding day was like a long time period. So we got sealed at like 10, I think, in the mm -hmm. morning. We got sealed at like 10. Sealings yeah. generally only take like 30 to 45 minutes. Yeah. So we were we had a luncheon um, with family members, and then we had time in between to set up for the reception, and then our reception started at like six, I think. Yeah, I think we did like six to eight. And so all that time we waited. Two hour until, reception. That's sounds yeah. really yeah. party time. Yeah. Yeah, it was long. <laughs> it was a long day. <laughs> okay. It was a long day. I guess for you guys, it's a long day, right? And also, you gotta you gotta seal that thing the other way, right? You gotta con in the Mormon uh, marriage. Do you have to what's it called? Uh, Consummate. Sexify it? Yeah, consummate it. Consummate. Ah, <laughs> uh, there's nothing. I don't know that, that it says that anywhere. Says anything like that? Hmm. Yeah. And I know of a lot of people like they're well. And here's where the purity culture comes into it. Like it's been built up in their minds as such a shameful thing that they won't even be able to do it like the first that time night or that there's a huge yeah, mental like a block two. massive yeah. mental block happening yeah i heard like, it i don't know someone left a comment or something the other day that said something like uh this there's a case of some mormon lady killed her husband because she didn't want to have sex because of the shame of it all or something happened i don't know oh i'll gosh. find this story Jeez. but she killed her husband Yikes. because she didn't want to have sex that's, that's a little wild. bit of a dramatic okay, response yeah, yeah. i mean you think you think <laughs> just be like uh <laughs> No, we're just, I have a headache. Just say you have yeah. a headache. Don't kill the guy. Jeez. <laughs> Gee, man, holy crap, lady. Okay, so all that, you had a party, good. Now, I know we're getting a little bit long, but that's okay, because this is really interesting. So you're married now, you guys go, your day is long, it's over, you have your party, you get to go, and then, then what? Then you just, you already had a place to live, you guys are ready to go, because you we obviously to lived hotel. together before. Yeah. We, okay. We didn't have our own place at the time, so we booked out a hotel, we were able to do our own thing. Yeah. It was, yeah. That's cool. It was nice. The culture leading up to that, though, and again, I keep coming back to Jordan on this one. It's just like the women that have to go through this. I feel like it's almost, for lack of a better term, degrading, where it's almost like everything in the real world, like in the in the secular culture, a wedding is like the women's day. We all know that yeah. we can mm -hmm. be there about that. Like we know that that's the it's the dude's day too, but it's more about the the girl and her dresses and everything else. And yeah. that's cool, right? I feel like though on a Mormon wedding, it's not like that, is it? Because you don't get a wedding dress, you don't get to do the reception line. You I don't guess have it the. It kind of depends. It depends on the Mormon. Because I did, we had, I was hell bent on having a reception, so I had mm -hmm. a wedding dress. We did like okay. I wanted it to be as like traditional person as possible. Because when you're Mormon, you don't really yeah. get that unless you like right. go out of your way to make it happen. You know. Okay. Um, but I know like our experience was pretty different because most of my friends that are LDS got married in a church building, like the LDS church building, the chapel. Okay. And they just do it in the gym and it's a little, what? not hate on that experience. So you but. guys, what you guys did is not, a, is not a common experience. Not, not really. Everybody really. gets not sealed always. in the temple. No. No. Um, oh. Oh, we're talking about um, reception. Receptions. Yeah. Everybody gets, oh, like most people okay. get yeah. sealed, but yeah. Okay. So not yeah. everybody does the big reception in that giant ass hotel, Joseph Smith Hotel. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is crazy. What else? What is that building used for? Um, they Lots have, of events. Yeah, they have like couple elderly couple missionaries that are retired that work like that volunteer for the church full time. Essentially, they work in that building. I think it has historical. It's a huge building. 
Yeah, it's humongous. It looks landmark. like a Trump hotel. It's now being used as what they did you what the general authorities used the temple for because the temple isn't accessible anymore. So they spent, I think it was millions. It leaked into one of the papers that they spent an inordinate amount of money to like redo an entire floor of the building for the general authorities to meet in because apparently they can't just meet in a regular building. It has to, to be like, special. Mormons, you ever heard of Zoom? We're doing it right Jeez, now. It works the right? same. <laughs> You can even have a green screen. You can put like, Joseph what is it Smith for a Rona full business account, you? like fifty yeah. bucks? <laughs> yeah, I know, eh? Jeez. Yeah. It just goes to show that any men and people in power of religion, they'll just they'll spend the money because why not, right? They don't give yeah. a shit. Yeah. Okay. That's beautiful. I love that. And so, marriage onward. So you guys mm-hmm. are married. You do the thing. What do you? What is expected of a standard LDS couple after you're married? Babies. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's. Like they right don't. away, like the day of. Yeah. There, there are some people who are announcing they're pregnant right two after months they come after back they, from their honeymoon. After they get married. So the, a lot of them are planning their uh, to be. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? When the egg is in the, the rising Ovulating. sun. Ovulating. What's it called? Ovulating. Yeah. Um, so there are probably women who are planning their wedding around their ovulation schedule. Totally. They could be. Yeah. I I wouldn't doubt that it's happened. Yeah. Imagine this. Okay. You never had sex your whole life. You're scared of it. Then you have sex. You're totally let down. Mm-hmm. Well, the guy isn't, but the girl is totally let down because. It, okay. Let's just be real. Yeah. And then you get pregnant. No thanks. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, there's your excuse to not do it anymore for nine months. I know. It's like okay, we did it. Good. There's a girl I, in my I grew up with her pastor's daughter, and she went to Bible college and had sex once and got pregnant. <laughs> the funniest okay. part is in that. It's like it's sad because you know there's the pastor's daughter and all that stuff, but she's still with her husband. They have a great family. Oh but like, gosh. could you imagine the first time no. you have sex and it's not enjoyable no. and you Damn get pregnant? It. <laughs> you get pregnant. Damn oh. it! <laughs> but that's the other weird thing about Utah culture is that they have really weird. Like they have a pre-marriage doctor visit for women. Uh, excuse me. Yes. Like so what? I did not Checking know this was hymen? a thing until I moved here. So it basically perpetuates the sex shame cycle. So women yeah. will have this, I'm getting married, I need to go to my gynecologist, my OBGYN beforehand. And mm-hmm. so the OBGYN will tell them that, you know, sex is probably gonna hurt. They'll give them or help them understand using a dilator to prepare them for this experience. And they'll typically always prescribe antibiotics assuming that they will probably get an infection. Like a UTI. So. Oh my goodness yeah. gracious. Yes. So they Why would not just r- educate young ladies and men before they, like, I, I mean, at least, like, I had to do premarital counseling to get the church we got married in, right? It was like an orthodox, mm-hmm. super gorgeous church, and it was a church that my wife grew up in. They said, yeah, you could get married here for free, um, but you have to do our marriage course, which is fine, sure. whatever, right? It's mm-hmm. like two weeks, you sit down, or like two, two hours, right? And I get it. But why don't they prepare Mormons, and especially women, because that's going to be like, that could be crazy if you don't expect that, right? Oh, yeah. Why oh, yeah. don't they prepare you? Why don't they prepare you? They don't talk about it. There's nothing in it's and I I used to be a teacher in Utah, so I worked with a lot of kids. They don't sex education here is abstinence only. Um, so there's no there's no discussion of like like basic intercourse is it. May I don't even think they cover birth control or contraceptives of any kind. I wouldn't imagine they do. Um, oh my gosh. So it's a cultural <laughs> thing. Comprehensive as a whole. sex ed yeah. is uh, absolutely. But you guys no. went to a normal high school. Yeah. We did. We went yeah, to a normal high Colorado. school in Colorado, and yeah. Colorado has comprehensive sex ed. So the schools in Utah generally don't have comprehensive sex ed. No, no, no. Is that so state it, mandated? Yeah, state mandated, and imagine all, that all of it falls to the parents, who a lot yeah. of times who won't probably were also not educated properly because they didn't get comprehensive <laughs> yeah. sex ed either. And there's also the shame of teaching about sex, so people are embarrassed to talk about it yep. with their kids. And then also the, well, uh, I'm just not going to talk about it until it presents <laughs> itself. And by that time, your kid has already been on the internet and has figured out yeah. some things. And probably well, Utah's won. like in the top, Utah's like the top state for like number of hours watching porn, I think. Yeah. Utah's like number one. I don't know if it's really? fallen, but it has <laughs> well, been in the last five years. Fast. 
It's because it's they don't. If you don't get educated in it, you're gonna go find it somewhere else, and that's how you become addicted to it. This is why Absolutely. you need to have your parents talk to you about this kind of stuff. Be like, look, it's normal, it's natural, beautiful, yep. lovely boobs and stuff. It's great, but let me t let me let me let you understand the ramifications of being addicted to this stuff and the expectation yeah. you might have of your future bride. That's just not. Mm -hmm. I'm talking from a dad who talks to sons, right? Yeah. Um, there's really important conversations you have to have. Like if you get if a, if a boy gets wrapped up in that type of pornography culture. Right, um, and not shamefully, but they they can be expecting things that a woman might not be comfortable doing, right. and so this is in conversations you have to have, right? So exactly. this is a good segue into the sex thing. So, um, yeah. you haven't been taught anything. You're prepared to have a UTI, which is insane to me. Which is holy crap, Ola. Yeah, um, yeah. And Just then, assume. <laughs> are you allowed to do things in a, as a married couple? Are you allowed to? Let's just get into it. Like I'm gonna yeah. probably be blushing here in a second, but like BJ's <laughs> no, and like the the butt stuff are you allowed to do other the, things do you know what i mean like yeah. all the stuff that you see are you allowed to do that stuff the funny thing about it is do you want to talk about the the letter oh. that they came out with well yeah, let's, let's, let's first of let's first talk about our personal experience with um okay. so our local stake president so we we interviewed with the bishop to be able to get married um mm -hmm. and then we interview with the stake president who's above him um, and he, oh God, I didn't think you, okay, after no, I he, he found out that we're <laughs> worthy to be married in the temple and that we didn't, uh, jump the gun. So as to right, speak, right, right. um, he brought us in and counseled us. I, I really hate that word, but, um, to not use, and this is the word he used tools in the bedroom because it could lead to problems. Okay. What and problems? Then, what problems? Yeah, so he talks about don't use tools, right? And I can only, I have a million theories as to why he's telling us that. But then he takes it one step further and refers to it as machinery. I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine us sitting, we're unwed, oh, man. sitting in that room like, dude, what have you seen? Like, <laughs> yeah, what, 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 what is going machinery? on And if we were, okay. like, because we came from Colorado, we're pretty educated on, on yeah. sex things, I would say. We're educated more than, like, the average Utah, I'd say. But it, I can't imagine being somebody who's not and then going into this meeting and being, like, machinery? Yeah. Who the hell is <laughs> like, using what machinery? What are talking about? I'd be like, what? And I, then I would pique my interest and be like, I'm finding out this machinery yeah. and what it is and what it does. Like, okay, so he I says don't because, so obviously using toys in the bedroom with your spouse is a no-no. And because what's the danger of it? There's nothing written against it. Yeah. It's a cultural thing. And what he alluded to was that sometimes, and People this is can really become sad, dependent. Yeah, dependent on this rather than an actual human. And I was let like, me, let's be real. They just don't women. They don't want women to have orgasms. That's just that's another one yeah. to, to just patriarchy. Yeah. That's I swear to God, and I'm not even joking. That's Absolutely. probably no, what that, it is. That is exactly Absolutely. what how I received it because I walked out there and I was like, "Can you believe what this guy just said to us?" Like, essentially, I, okay. he was like, "I." People are out there. They're like, "I can't do it for my wife," and I'm offended that she's getting something else to do it for her. Like, who cares? This is the prop. Oh my gosh. Okay, so when you guys are a little bit offended about that, when you walk out of a meeting like that, are you like, what are we doing? I, there, was there no point where you're oh, like, man. let's not do this? It, that was it, weird for us. It might have been like a moment of clarity where I was like, what the hell is that about? Because, <laughs> because like him telling us that there is nothing. Uh, as far as in the church handbook, there's nothing written for leadership. Anywhere. There's nothing that says that they should. What if you currently? What if you called them on it? What if you called them on it? So where is that written in the Book of Mormon? Where is that in the Bible? Oh, he he has the trump card because he has revelation for his. State. Oh, he gets that's right. He's yeah. convenient, yeah. right? Yeah. Bullshit. So, so okay. there's that. So, but it yeah. wasn't always that way. Um, in 1980, in January 1982, the first presidency, the prophet and his homeboys sent out a letter and in that letter it detailed saying that married people who participate in unholy or impure practices in the bedroom should repent before they return are able to return to the temple and then explicitly described in that as oral sex is an un impure and unholy practice yeah. um that, and that is lasted nine months and yeah no, that's in the last it. that's in the 80s too this guy is he crazy yeah. There's so much cocaine out there like, okay oh. so <laughs> so that's it so you are so mormons typical mainline lds are allowed to engage in things 
no toys, obviously, because that's recent. Because you guys got married like a few years ago. Yeah, but and you are allowed to engage guy. in the other things. Yeah, just that guy. Yeah. But you yeah. are allowed to engage in other things if, yeah. Yeah. Uh, with yeah. a, a consenting adults, married couples. Most Mormons will tell you Thank that God. the church doesn't tell you what to do in the bedroom, like you. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. like that. Okay, yeah. good. And you guys, and Which a lot of people, good. a lot of people who I've spoken to, like ex Mormons who have a beef with the church, will say, "No, you can't do anything." So I really appreciate your honesty in that no. because that's yeah. important. Yeah, they don't yeah. regulate. At least yeah, not was, anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, oh my and gosh. that's between a married man and woman. They're they're like, yeah, that's you do you. I I mean, obviously, but no toys, still no things. no machinery. Yeah. yeah, depending on who you talk to, As, and who knows what they're like. If that dude is telling us no toys, I mean, they could be telling somebody else not to yeah. do something else. So you really don't know. So it's never this. It's never a streamlined uh, like across the board thing. It's always whoever you get. Yep. Yeah. We call what if it you get an a hole. Yeah. Oh yeah. So what? If, yeah. What if you like? So some leadership might have more liberal that. leaderships. Some might have more conservative leadership. And so you just choose. Do you like chicken? Ch what did your guy say? And then you. It's like, can you just like go to him next? You're like, yeah, I'm just booking like, a time with this guy. Well, that's the thing is, it's can based on where you live, with your bishop, and you or? can't like you're stuck with the one you got. So even if somebody else did the same thing you did and got a lesser punishment, you can't do anything about it. Yep. Do, Mormon, do married Mormon couples speak to each other about those conversations? Do you guys get into that? Do you talk about like, hey, what does your bishop let you guys do? Anything like that happen? I don't, I don't think so because they would keep that under wraps because then you would be like fessing up to your friends or whatever that you committed a sin or something like that. Which Boring. Would, yeah. So you can't even like have conversations with your close friends behind. about cool stuff. No, that's they might write you out. There's a lot they of rat you out around it. Yeah. Explain totally me what could. happens when you rat someone out. I can't believe this is a thing, but like they this all tell totally you. A, this is a totally a thing, and it's perpetuated by the culture at BYU. So the BYU has an honor code office, right, that enforces the honor code that you agree to live by. And so essentially, they it's like reinforced tattletaling. Like if yeah. your roommate is listening to music with swear words in it, they can call the honor code office and say, "Hey, my roommate's listening to music with swear words in it," and the honor code office will call you in and discipline you. And so this is the culture that's rewarded in the church. So, so members, what absolutely. reward do you get for ratting out your roommate? Nothing. You like, just get the idea that you're more holy. Yeah. yeah. That you're you bastards. upholding the rules. I and don't so like that. That's no. what happens in college. And then when they get into adult wards, it absolutely happens where adults yeah. tattle on each other all the time. Ew. Okay. Yes. There is a there's a thread on ex Mormon on Reddit where there's a guy who worked in that office who taught who did an AMA. Go oh, read it. I need to. I need to read up on that. It's that a good recent? one. Okay. Yeah, it's recent. Okay. We're gonna get a whole episode of Be Away. Okay. So we're yeah, into the yeah. sex stuff. We got so basically you're allowed to do stuff except toys, which is stupid because if you could do all the other stuff, you might as well just get the stuff. Yeah. Because let me tell you guys out there, the stuff is fun. Okay. Let's be <laughs> real. I've been married for 15 years. Here's something. I don't know if you guys are. How long have you guys been married for now? Three years. Three years. Three years total. Okay. Wait till about a couple more years. There's this thing called the Mojo Upgrade Quiz. You're welcome. <laughs> the Mojo Upgrade Quiz. Okay. Just, you know what? Do it tonight. I'm, Do it I'm tonight. Write, and it I, write it down. <laughs> so basically, you guys, it gives you a quiz. It asks you a whole ton of questions about just ideas of what you have about sex, right? And it's everything <laughs> from like nipple clamps to like weird stuff you're like what is this mean and you have to google it don't google it okay i promise you just answer honestly and then send the e you guys each answer it and then it'll link up the answers that you guys agreed on oh interesting it's actually quite wow. cool for married it's a really great thing for married couples mormons wouldn't be able to do it but just no. do it anyway it's the same okay okay, okay good we're going so long but i don't even care this is so interesting okay let's get into <laughs> some q a's q a's q a's what do they think about the netflix show and the bombing so they're talking about uh murder, murder amongst among mormons. mormons yeah um, that was a really good one. Uh, we watched it and we, we read the story about Mark Hoffman before mm -hmm. watching it. We like heard about it a month before it came out. So, and we had never heard any of this stuff. Like they're trying, they try to sweep another kind of sweep under the rug, rug type of thing. Yeah. But the person, the people who made it, at least one of them used to be Mormon. Jared I don't Hess. know. I don't know if Jared Hess still is Mormon or not. He used to be. So I don't know if the church was a little bit more comfortable if Jared is still an active Mormon because they feel like it'll get a decent, yeah. a nicer spin. It's marketing. But, it's marketing. Yeah. But yeah. to put it out there, the third uh, episode, there are a lot of parallels with 
young Joseph Smith and young Mark Hoffman doing oh. treasure digging and things yes. like that. Yep. And uh, a lot of par- I'm parallels putting that together too. Characters. It's like really interesting to watch it with that. Like, Shame. if you guys haven't seen Murder Among Mormons, go watch it. It's crazy. It. The White yeah. Salamander was proven to be false. So stop saying that. That was a thing. It wasn't. Yeah. yeah okay. It wasn't. Even Why do a they... very oh, prominent, even a very prominent um, anti-Mormon uh, researcher, um, Gerald uh, and Sandra Tanner. They were very adamant that those were documents were forgeries. Yeah. And the church didn't listen. Well. So. So. well, the church, it, they did this, right? They'll pay for mm-hmm. whatever. So if you guys are good enough to make forgeries, go capitalize. Oh, yeah. Because they'll buy that shit off you. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> why, do they, why do they eat all the same gross food? Funeral potatoes. What does that mean? <laughs> Funeral potatoes. Funeral potatoes, uh, they're exactly what they sound like. Um, the... the uh, when you have a funeral, it's, uh, I mean, the bishop is uh, in charge of it. The Relief Society will do like a the little The women's banquet. organization will make yeah. all the food right. and everything. And that's the where women. the funeral potatoes yeah. comes from. Do you get the little funeral sandwiches, the little triangles? Uh, uh, usually it's ham. Yeah. And most of the, the funerals that I've been to, it's been like ham, no, no. casseroles, and things like There's that. There's like some women are so good, they make like rolled ones, they make sandwiches, they're little corner what? sandwiches, some are tuna, some are egg salad. You don't wow. get that in your church? Wow. No. no. They're my favorite. They, they are my favorite sandwiches in the world. Funeral sandwiches are my Dang. favorite. Okay, I'm going to start a food truck called Funeral Sandwiches, and it's going to be amazing. <laughs> okay. They didn't ask about the green jello, but that stuff's nasty. That stuff's gross. <laughs> That's a green Utah jello. Thing. Green Are you guys forced, manipulated, pressured to the church to promote, invest in Mormon-owned businesses? No. Not forced or manipulated, but it's highly encouraged in the culture. Yeah. How so many like of if, your friends were in MLMs? I don't have any friends. I have quite a few. My friends are all <laughs> It's always women, right? Because they're at home, generally, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, they're trying to bring in a... That's the appeal is they can do it from home. And the tactics that MLMs use are very similar to the tactics that the church uses. And so there's some familiarity there. Does the Mormon church own Zion Bank? Do you lose your money if you're an apostate? No. No. Yeah, I think that would be You can't be like Deseret First is another bank that they own. Yeah, Deseret First, if you, their credit union, if you aren't a member, you can't be a part of it, however. Okay. So I don't know how that would work if you left the church. I bet they'd make you move. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Why do why do, why do Mormons believe they can talk to the children's soul before they are conceived? What is that all about? I have never. I've never like really heard it heard expressed that. that way. But yes, they do believe. Yeah. A lot of them do believe that. And That's not like written anywhere though. Yeah, and a lot of times they will feel like a, a lot of the language that I've heard people use is we feel that there's another soul that wants to be a part of our family, and yeah. they they'll be trying to get pregnant from that point on. Okay. Uh, how is it they can't use the internet but can use a phone? What's that supposed to mean? They can use the they internet. They can't use the internet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's the correct if I'm wrong. Th- yeah, missionaries, missionaries are not are allowed, allowed to use the internet with free reign. Um, but, but they members can. They can, they're allowed to use a phone, and the phone that they have, if they have a smartphone, it, it, it has software on it that locks it down. So the missionaries won't get into anything so they they're can't, not supposed to. Yeah. So they can't look at porn, basically, is all that <laughs> exactly. is. Exactly. <laughs> Or look at anti-Mormon stuff. Okay, so is yes. it true? So correct this person if he's wrong, or her. Is it true they lie to kids till they're eighteen and tell the truth? By then it's too late and they're too far to leave. Um, if, I don't think so. If they're lying to about the truth until they're eighteen, if they're talking about like church history or things like that, I was never told the truth. No. Okay. So. Yeah, so at least in my experience, they generally don't tell yeah. you because they some of them generally really don't know. Yeah. Indoctrination yeah. runs deep, Most right? Don't That's true, indoctrination, exactly. What are you guys doing for yourselves to heal what you went through? Therapy. <laughs> What's your My sweater therapy say? is cool. Nice. That's a, right that's a dope hoodie. That's dope. <laughs> He's cool. But yeah, lots and lots so, of therapy. Lots of, I mean, we're deconstructing. So reading, I mean, we're doing the opposite of what we did in the church. Like we're yeah. reading all the anti things now to kind of get a grip on what we clearly yeah. did Sweet. not understand. And even reading some of the, the actual church publications. Yeah. So. Good for you. That's excellent. Yeah. Why do Mormons always feel the need to dress up? Like even to go to Target? <laughs> um, it's... Like the women culture, I feel like is very, I think that's why family vloggers thrive so well because the culture like that is in the church. And so they live like that already. So it's not difficult for them to be like that yeah. online. So it's like part of their time. lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they're supposed to look their best because that's important for their husbands, right? Yep. Yeah. Mormons are supposed to cut anything addictive. Why don't they cut addictive social media? Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, real talk, though. There have been uh, times when recently when the prophet encouraged people to do social media fasts for, like, a week at a time or things like that. Yeah, but not, like, long-term. Yeah, not long-term. Okay. It is addictive. That makes sense. Us, <laughs> uh, if you're a widow with children and remarry, how does being sealed in heaven work? Who's sealed? So that kind of depends on the circumstances. If you're... If you're a widow and you remarry. If you're a widow, then... Then you are married to your the man that you were sealed to, regardless of if you remarry yeah. civilly. So the new not. dude doesn't get you in heaven, the old no. dude gets you. You can only be That's sealed to one person. Yeah. Unless As there's a, a, a dissolution of a ceiling or something, but I don't know if they can do that posthumously. They'll just change the rules if they have to. Yeah. All right. So it would be your 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 husband that died and those kids. You wouldn't be sealed to anybody else that you got married. Okay. Yeah. This is a good question about today's topic. Do you feel differently about your bond in marriage because it was done in the temple? Would you redo it? I don't feel really any differently about it. I wish we hadn't done the the whole yeah. sealing part. I feel like that was a total waste of time now. But um, I feel like. It, for us, it was like the same as getting married, like civilly. Yeah. So it okay. didn't yeah. really change much for us. I don't feel like. Yeah. That's good. Someone writes, not a question. I hope you don't Mormon bash. Please respect religions. No. All right. Uh, have, <laughs> this is, this have, is have, have, I will respect a religion if it doesn't take advantage of people and like have to put people through therapy. Okay. That's if you have to put people through therapy. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. You don't get, get respected. <laughs> have Jordan and McKay watched Escaping Polygamy on Lifetime? Your thoughts yes. on it? Yes. Okay, save it. We'll do a whole episode because I haven't seen it. Then we'll do a whole episode on it. Okay, we'll save it. Okay. Is being Mormon similar to being Jehovah Witness? They seem very alike and weird. We have a lot of XJ dubs that interact with us online, and there are definitely some similarities. Yeah. Okay. That's another episode. Yeah. Definitely. How many relationships break up while guys are on their mission? Ooh. This is Ooh, a relationship. I am one. a part of that one. Oh. Yeah. Even. But did, even, was Jordan was Jordan a home wrecker though for that one? No, no, no. Okay. not that time. Even even better for that one, the home wrecker was another girl. Yeah, yeah. Unreal. Yeah. Dirty. That's I mean, she's right. gonna be in the utter darkness for that. So whatever. Yeah. There you I go. Know. I know. <clears throat> so this person asked purity culture. Do you get the talk before you're married? We found out. No, you don't. Typically not. Like not even parent. from your parents. McKay, your dad didn't be like, dude. It's really oh, a letdown. It wasn't even my dad. It was uh, it was my mom. Who, who did it for me my mom and did but i was then, like eight even then it wasn't like <laughs> contraceptive and things like that it was just like procreative kind of um, sex babies nothing else it's bad yeah. don't yeah. do it you'll die well this is a good segue question do mormons get married at an early age because they want to have sex yes absolutely that's why we moved up if you fool around <laughs> if you fool around you can't get married in the temple and then everybody shames you because you can't get married but in the how temple. i'm sure there's been many people sealed that have fooled around Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's just if just you don't confess tell or not. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If you're pressured to confess or not. Yeah. Here's a question that when we do the family vlogger episode, because you guys are going to have to do more research. Yes. Because it's, I know the world, you don't know it yet. But this is a good question to think about. Can family vloggers be held accountable for their knowledge of their videos being used as Pluto playlists? So you don't know what they're talking about. Basically, I found this thing called Pluto playlists, and they put all the videos together, the girls doing their period uh... things, bikinis, and these are Mormon families that perpetuate this. Is that biblical to exploit your children? If they're, and again, this might be another episode, but finding that scripture that says, don't do this. I don't know. We would really have to look for that because there's nothing that comes to mind. I, I would consider that to be a sin. Of I do, period. They, yeah, they're putting their children in that situation. In my, and that there would be nothing saying anything close to yes or no in the actual okay. church thing that would be up to the interpretation of well that's why that. i mean there's nothing really out there on that so that's why they can take it and run yeah. with it well yeah. we're gonna i mean that's gonna be again why we're doing this whole thing is to expose this whole it's like a cartel we gotta it expo really expose it so. biblically too because if they believe in that shit then like a passengers is one of the most popular ones like he's a professor at byu Mm -hmm. And he has videos yeah. of his children shaving their legs, talking about their periods and their acne it's on the internet for the entire world to see. Not All appropriate. Right. Well, Do you eat pineapple? Is that yes. A, okay. That's a sex thing for sure. But <laughs> what is the secret, really? Why are all women? Why are all Mormon women so pretty? That's really nice. 
I don't. Jordan, you're gorgeous. Know. You're gorgeous. Oh, thanks. She is. I, I don't Married know, up. but we get asked that question a lot because, but again, I think it goes back to that judgy culture. Yeah. Like a lot of women, especially in Utah, we all look the same. Keeping up <laughs> yep. with the Joneses. <laughs> because it, it's because again, it's I think it's again it's patriarchal where it's like you have to keep your husband happy, and this is not a question that's been asked, but if you don't keep your husband happy, if he steps out in your marriage, is it your fault? I mean, that's a lot of times anecdotally how it's handled. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that's so dumb. Uh, dumb. How much parent? How much? Say, how much of a say do parents have in who you marry? Ooh. Um, I feel I, like there's a thing. I know you guys are saying keeping it unsaid, but I I hear you. Yeah. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. But there, there is a, there is a pressure sometimes. There's a social pressure because yeah. specifically as a male, they don't want you marrying a non Mormon. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, they don't, and especially if uh, you have family that is um, higher, higher up in the church. higher up in the church, um, yeah. they will scrutinize like, oh, well, why? Like, they don't have anybody that's a state president or, or anything like that. So why are you oh, okay getting involved with them? That kind of stuff. That's anecdotal as well. Do higher ups have access to people's confessed sins? Yes. Oh my gosh! Do you guys realize how much of a conflict of like everything that is a total spiritual privacy abuse, violation? Every, that's yeah. a total privacy violation. Do you sign anything nope. when you're getting your card or anything to say you're cool with this? So why nope. have the Mormons not been sued to oblivion for having these types of files? I on have no idea because I'm sure they don't regulate it. But it's that's what is. I mean, it's hearsay, right? But your supposedly they your do. confessions travel with you yeah. based on where you where you move. Yeah. I feel like they have a lot of dirt on a lot of people. I feel like they do. I would like love to see my file. I'd be yeah. very curious. Oh my gosh. To we're be breaking into the but... we're breaking into the mountain someday. <laughs> into the vault. Is Mormon soaking a real thing? Factor fiction. Here it is. We I we get asked this question was so often. <laughs> absolutely convinced it was an urban legend. But because of what is, the okay, lives we do What is it? I don't even know what is it? Okay, so okay. it is a BYU culture thing that Mormon culture skirts thing. the law of chastity requirement um, by it's not sex, it's just parking it. And not doing and anything. It so Parking it there, just not, no gyrating. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's, <laughs> it's in the end zone, but none of the celebration. Oh, I'm sweating again. So you're just, in, is it just the tip or is it like you just... And then it just sits there. I mean, up to the couple, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, just. But I mean, sex is so sex is sex, is sex. So yeah. yeah. So know. that's a that's a myth. No, we have heard of people we, who. Have, oh, is yeah. it? <laughs> I, for a long time, yeah. I was like, I don't believe it. Somebody tell me that they've uh, experienced. And then we it. had a bunch of people say they did. So yeah. evidently, it happens. People, just not just like it. random How? no names, but people that we know. The self control um, required for something like yeah. that. I don't even. Like that's, that's you might a as well ninja. just do it. Like, what? Seriously. I'm going to try that later and see how it works. Incognito. I'm going to ask my wife. I'm like, wife, this is an experiment. Just go with it. Just yeah. chill. I think, like, I think you'll only need a couple seconds and realize, wow, this is just... <laughs> this, this is stupid. Is this ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> this is dumb. What's the point of that? Okay, that's... Yeah. Okay, so, freaking college. So it's a way to have sex and without... Ha- it's kind of like the butt, butt but yep. uh so you don't have to doesn't count because it doesn't that's count. so stupid how people no. will skirt the rules at any cost and have no. the mind think that that's okay that that that's word, the problem yeah. that's the whole problem with this whole thing okay yep. are mormons allowed to associate with people that are not from the mormon church yeah uh, yes we, but, but utah culture um there's does. there's a temple recommend question that asks you if you associate with anyone who has views contrary to the church or okay, if you like sense. endorse them. Yeah. So yeah. if you okay. were endorsing a particular political party that was or if contrary, you support the LGBTQ plus community. That's mm-hmm. an issue right. for them. Okay. Yeah. What do you guys regret most about being Mormon? All the time. The time. The yeah. time and energy dedicated to it. Guilt. Guilt yeah. association. Guilt. Yeah. Because yeah. all that stuff is so. I mean, you have to undo all that. Yeah, and then. Yeah looking at it from the other side going wow this is like a lot of just dumb and money bullshit. money you guys <laughs> want my time how much over back. the t- yeah you guys have been tithing 10 percent since you're eight 
Yeah. Off and on. Off and on, yeah. And I wasn't always like the greatest tithe payer for a long time. Don't but... they know though? Don't they call you and be like, yo, dude, where's the money? Well, where's the money? You have to do 10%, but they you determine what 10% is, and they don't verify that. Okay. Yeah. So you kind of okay. have some so they don't, they don't get your paid stubs or anything like that. Yeah. Okay. So do if Mormons you're believe honest, they, oh, if you're no, honest, and good. again, the the culture of guilt means that they generally people, okay, if, people you, are. if you like jerk off and you go tell your, your, that's an honest person. Let's be real. Like I'd be yeah. like, I ain't telling anybody shit. So, no. okay. Do Mormons believe they could become gods? Yes. Short okay. answer. Yes. Yep. Okay, we'll we'll to save that. that. That's it. That's all we have for today. Okay. Awesome. There's going to be so much more soaking. OMG, so I thought that was like, because in Bethel, in Bethel Redding, in uh, California, there's a church called Bethel, which I hate, um, and they do what's called grave soaking, which is super almost satanic, but they call it like, so they go to a grave of a, of a very spiritually, spiritual person that was like, I don't know, like, like, let's just say like a really spiritual pastor or something. They'll go to his grave and they'll soak his spirit to get Ew. his gifting. I'm not joking. Ew. So that's what Are I thought serious? that was. I think I'd prefer to just park it in a vag. That's the, to me, that's like the weird, that's super weird. That's they do a lot of stuff. Weird. They have got, you guys get into the Bethel stuff. They have gold dust that comes from their like ducks. They have like angel feathers. They have glory clouds. You want to get into some weird oh stuff. Gosh. You think people think Mormons are weird and they are. Bethel is just oh. like as weird or as crazy. Oh as well, gosh, we'll so have to weird. talk to you about some of that stuff because I've learned recently about that kind of stuff in Mormonism. Okay. With with weird stuff, but I'll we'll leave that for another time. This is amazing. Yeah. Okay, this has been really eye opening. I'm sure we can we just probably just touch the surface of this. Really, really interesting. Okay, so um, is there anything that that I missed that you guys are like we need to talk about this before we go? Um, the oh, should we talk about like the shame culture? I think it is good to be said about the shame culture and perpetuation of like lying when it comes to masturbation and pornography mm -hmm. consumption um because both of those things require confession to a bishop yeah mm -hmm. and um like i sent you a video and maybe maybe we're planning on doing like a live reaction to it like that uh the video that my stake president kind of used to draw out a confession that wasn't mm -hmm. there um but um literally every single general conference that they have twice a year for the whole church um at least one person talks about pornography use and yeah. how it's like soul crushing destruction like literally likening and it falls under the umbrella umbrella of sexual sin which in the book of mormon is like in just a step below murder yep yep we talked about that so yeah. It creates this, um, and with the um, with masturbation and things like that, because usually the pornography and masturbation kind of go hand in hand. <laughs> that it's, pun intended. Yeah, um, parking it creates it, this um, for those who have this shame. Like I committed a sin that's next to murder. Don't yeah. want to tell their bishop. Hide it, and it creates this perpetual hiding it um keeping things clandestine lying to shame keep cycle. away from it and it's it's totally shameful and i think that may have played a part in like the situation with josh duggar recently yeah. Yeah. and there's a lot of alleging like maybe um ted bundy had kind of the same situation it's hard I to draw you, those are parallels, there males but. inside the mormon church like do you know what an incel is yeah yeah are there a lot of incels? Because I feel like there'd be a lot of shame attached to a Mormon male who are like, I feel like who it's just, you guys are bred to just date and marry, but are there males and females that don't get married or like, kind of like, there's nobody that's going to like hook up with this person. They're, they're out there for sure. Yeah. They're standouts. They are, they stick out like sore thumbs. Yeah. And so do you think there's an incel culture of males who don't get married in the more? There's I don't know, a whole actually. group of there's a little group that I would say is a whole like defined group of incels could, within the it church. Could be hard, but that would. Are they bronies? Are they furries? Are they weird? They're like uh, they're, anime. 
They're like alt right Mormons. Oh, okay. So they're they fundam- mo- almost fundamentalists. Yeah. Basically, like letter of the law. Yeah, kind women of. should be confined to their bathtubs when they're menstruating. Type <laughs> nonsense. Yeah, <laughs> Joe or Brigham Young did nothing wrong. That gives me an Blood idea. Atonement. That gives me an idea. Uh, idea for a show. Fundamental. Uh, correct me if I'm wrongs. Yes. Yeah. 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 But yeah. That's oh, that's gonna be a good one. So yeah. yeah. Correct me the- if I'm Wongs. I wrote. <laughs> Penis. Penis. Okay. Okay, so that that's great. I mean, that makes sense. I think that's a that's the shame. I think what we're seeing is a pattern emerging already two episodes in about the shame culture in Mormonism and mm-hmm. like the the idea that if ugh, it's just crazy to me that they 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 use it's just scare tactics is what it yeah. is yeah. in the end. Oh, absolutely. Jeez, right up to, and your marriage should be fun. You shouldn't be scared of it. It should be fun, and you should be able to get your robes off together. Unacceptable. I want to see boobs Take right them away. Off we each are each other. We waited <laughs> this long. If you waited, you should be able to be like, I'm t- seeing stuff before we leave this Where's temple. The I want to see boobs in the temple. Here. Yeah, I want to see the boobs in the temple. <laughs> temple boobs. I okay. wouldn't doubt that something like that happened before. I wouldn't doubt I've got a package sending your way really soon, guys. I've got some cool stuff in there, including sticker. Yay! Mm-hmm. And a bracelet. Yay! We're and so excited. a keychain. Yes. Chachi. Okay. But I got other things. Anyway, this has been an amazing episode. I think people are just kind of be like, you know, talking about sex and religion is really, really like, it's almost taboo, but it's good. I blushed at least five times during this episode. I learned what soaking was, which is like, what? So people will convince themselves to do anything if it's not sinning, which is so weird. Anyway, um, I appreciate it. What do you guys want to talk about next? It's It's your turn to choose a topic for next episode. Should we do levels of heaven? Yeah. We'll do... I think, well, I don't want to step on your toes. The next one we'll choose is after the levels of heaven will be probably the temple because people will want okay. to. You're going to lose your so shit. L- that's, am, I gonna, am I going to need my You're square gonna pillow? Shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's one particular thing that I don't want I don't want to like ruin it for you because I want your, your genuine reaction, but you okay. will need your don't square pillow it. for it. Oh, also, I didn't even think. Mormons believe that God got Mary pregnant, like legitimately, like in the normal, natural way. Like didn't didn't soak it. No. <laughs> like, had intercourse with like, Mary. God in marriage. <laughs> okay, that's a whole other episode. God is married. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, amazing. Okay, so that's incredible. And I, I've just had another idea for some of your merch. I have swear pillows, which is my thing. Yeah. Like, it's just, I feel like thera- th- anything therapeutic is good, especially for what you guys are coming through. Yeah. We're going to sell Outer Darkness swear pillows. <laughs> it's going to be an all black pillow. It says Outer Darkness with the graphic. And you just swear your shit into the outer darkness. That's amazing. <laughs> Yelling into <Okay>. the void. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love into it. The void. Oh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay, so it's going to be... <laughs> oh so, my guys, gosh, head yes. over to their, their Teespring's link below. Head over to the YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe. Instagram. They're big on TikTok. Head over there. Make sure you tell them I sent you. Just because... Because. Because they said so. Just and knows. follow me on Instagram and YouTube. And this has been an amazing episode, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I cannot wait till next week now. I'm so excited. So excited. Thank, Thank you. you. Not much else to say there. Incredible people. They're just fun. It's funny. They're not... They're willing to share everything. It's just a glimpse into something that often people don't get glimpses into, right? They don't really get to see it. So, um, just want to thank Jordan... I just want to thank Jordan McKay again with all my heart. There's going to be so many episodes of this. It's so much fun to do it with them. And they're, they're growing their channel, guys. Help them grow their channel. Head over to Instagram. Like them on there. TikTok is where their biggest platform is. They're like up to near 65,000K or something. It's great. And they're just... The way that they deliver their message is good. I like it. But most of all, head over to the YouTube channel, Jordan McKay. It's linked below and go subscribe. Watch their videos because they're really interesting. We want to get them monetized so they could use this as a little bit of a side income while they're in school. And obviously they're giving a good message out and they're giving hope to people who are ex-Mormons. And I think that's an amazing thing that they're doing. Therapy. It's therapy. And they just got a brand new pillow in their in their Teespring, which is the Outer Darkness Therapy Swearing Pillow, go get one of those, okay? Swearing pillows are really important. You know, I have one here. Um, but if you're like, it's an incredible idea because if you want to just swear into the abyss, into the Outer Darkness, all those sinful words just go out there. So you don't have to worry about asking forgiveness from your bishop if you're a Mormon. So head over to their Teespring, order their merch. It's really good because I made it. So that's why it's really good. And I'm not getting anything from it, just letting you guys know. We want to support them because we love their message. So deep breath. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook and follow them as well. And say this with me, Sexeroni. And I'll see you tomorrow. Because I love you, baby.
What's up, girl? What are you doing tonight? You want to, like, come over to my dorm and watch Netflix and stuff? PG rated only. We could sit down on my shitty couch that's in my dorm. It's been farted on by like a hundred thousand guys over the years. Definitely gross, but we could sit there. I'll bring out the blanket my mom packed me. We can, like, hold hands under the blanket. What's that? You want to head back and try something? I've heard about this thing, it's called soaking. You ever heard of it? Right? It's not a myth. My friend said it, it was cool, so why don't we try it? What is it? Well, okay, here. Here are my plan, okay? So we're going to make out a little bit, okay? And it's not a sin to make out, right? Uh, Joseph Smith said that's cool. So we're going to make out. And uh, I know we want to wait till we're married, but this thing. So what happens is, I basically, I get a boner, okay? And then I just put it in there, and I don't move. And then that's it. That's, that's it. How's it enjoyable for you? I don't know. It's not enjoyable for anybody. I have no idea what. But they said to do it. So, Bible College, YOLO.